What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a video I've been meaning to make for a long time. I put out part two and part one of my anorexia recovery series a long time ago, around I would say a year, year and a half ago, and I've been meaning to put out part three ever since then. I've been so open about everything. I've shared a lot to the world, all my subscribers, all of you guys. I've gotten so many messages from so many people that are battling anorexia, battling eating disorders, battling a lot of issues. And so this video is meant for you guys. I love interacting with you guys. I love talking to you guys. I love hearing all of your stories, meeting all of you. And that's the reason why I make these videos is for you guys and also for me to reflect on as well. I've been through a lot, guys. We all have. I've been in many different treatment centers and I've experienced a lot with this disease. If this video can help out at least one person out there struggling with anorexia or any sort of debilitating mental illness, that's all that matters to me, guys. This is gonna be part three of my anorexia recovery series, the finale. Stay tuned. to uh, my ever so stubborn self well the rational or the ir irrational but the irrational part of me that needs to listen to this I woke up today as Eric Lampkin feeling like I was gonna die I've never felt that way before in my life since you lack the, you know, skills to enact the necessary changes that you want, you want to do, and you know that will lead to a life of, of normalcy, to, to betterness, to everything that you, you want, but you're too afraid to make them because of what's you know the scary possible outcomes it could it could produce for you uh, what what realistically Eric is going to happen realistically you are in pro probably the worst position you could be in you're sick you are underweight you have an eating disorder and you still feel compelled to do the same habitual OCD shit on a day to day basis. Broken Yo Cafe, rolling in style, making my way through it. Making my way through it. Alright, man, it's all you. I'm checking in. I'm about to see this. We're at 30 minutes right now. I can't even eat. This is so awesome. Dude, he's got it. He's got it. No Dude, doubt about it. Now you have to get we have winning blood. Winning blood. Your brother's about to finish. Look at that. Here we go, Eric. Let's go, Eric. Man wins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it all began. You guys recall in my last video, in the second video in the series, I uh, told you guys how I started with food challenges and started doing them. And this was my first ever one. It was at the Broken Yoke. And I discovered my unique ability to eat a lot of food right there. And uh, surprisingly, I didn't feel as bad or as, as guilty as I thought I would feel considering my history and the fact that I had just gotten out of treatment uh, about three or four months prior to that and that was something I, I thought to myself well where could I take this where could I go with this and from there I started doing uh, more really and in, 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 you know seeing where I could take that challenge wise I wanted to go do every challenge in San Diego and that was one of the things that I had to kind of think about really and and then it kind of all got put on the back burner and I had to go off to school again and that was one of the things that I was looking forward to so I moved in with my roommate and uh, it was the first time that I had really thought about living on my own again I wasn't with anybody you know parents no real friends really it was just me and my roommate 
and then uh, going back to school and with my body type the way it was and I was just so insecure and this is I'm sure my gynecomastia back when it was at its worst and just having a lot of issues with you know seeing myself so I took to the gym and I thought about what I had learned from treatment and thought about everything and I said you know what why not and I don't know how I was able to do it because getting out of treatment was so hard and I did have some pretty bad relapses when I got out but I was just you know what I said I'm gonna put everything I have into this I'm gonna flip that switch and turn this this insatiable appetite that I have into something and put it towards lifting weights and I started filming little vlogs and so this is one of them right here what is up everybody Eric the electric company guys again with the start of week four of Lane Norton's fat I did get my hundreds that I wanted today on my flat bench and I'm very fucking proud of that and uh, you'll see here uh, 90s for five start of my working sets right there really uh, just having some of the best days some of the best sessions I've ever had training the last few um, sessions and I feel like uh, these are the, been some of the most meaningful ones and this what you're about to see this set here is probably one of the another milestone for me going from being able to barely being able to get 50s up for a few reps uh, only a year ago to go into this is pretty monumental for me. It may not seem like a lot to some of you watching, but uh, with my history and what I've been through, this is uh, pretty substantial. <laughs> I was just like, fuck, lock out, lock out, lock out, lock out. <laughs> Guy behind me comes, boom, 165 right there. So I'm proud of that. Um, and then this is right here to finish it out. It's just 170 for four for push press, which is pretty good for me too. So essentially I went from this guy being, you know, afraid of food, petrified of, of putting food in my mouth to this guy, just committing to strength and blowing up really. And, you know, both physically and mentally as well. And looking back on it in retrospect, I was so happy. I was really committed to this, but at the same time, I was putting so much time and effort into time in the gym, not time on the bike. It was just another way for me to really release aggression, release a lot of feelings and kind of just put my disorder into another area and that was the gym. So whereas in the past it had been spending hours on the bike. Eventually as time went on, that summer ended, I met my then girlfriend at the time and this was something that I was completely uh, unfamiliar with. I mean, I had, I had girlfriends in the past, but this is like my first serious one. And it's actually kind of hard for me to go through these pictures, but I'm putting them up anyways. And of course I have to put a nice little smiley face over her face to pr protect her, you know, identity as well. So, but yeah, it's, it's really hard to look back on these just because of where I was at. I mean, I went into that relationship as a, uh, as a guy that felt like he was going to be single for the rest of his life. And so, you know, she taught me a lot about myself and let me realize uh, every all the potential that I had. I mean, I had a lot of great times with her. I did a lot of things that I never thought I would do. But then again, I had to play this game, I guess you can say, with trying to balance that and balance what I had with the gym, balance that with my powerlifting, with everything that I had committed to. So. That was my first major league eating contest and that was a day that I never will forget. She actually wanted to go up with me and uh, be right there in front of me as I, as I did that, which was an awesome moment for me. And eventually I took towards riding more and doing more on the bike and everything, which was awesome. And I developed, I would say, more of a preference for bike riding rather than weightlifting. And so I really had to manage that because it took way more time out of my schedule, way more time out of our relationship. 
eventually we did move in together and we got our own apartment and everything. This is, I think, on like the third night of our, you know, apartment signing, lease, whatever you want to say. I was just filming some shenanigans, but yeah, we had a lot of good times that summer. And I think that experience really helped us realize a lot about ourselves as well. I mean, we're both young in our 20s and pretty much doing something that not a lot of young 20 year olds were able to do at the time. And that showed us a lot. But I still felt like I was unable to really love another person without loving myself first. I was at that stage and that was something that constantly was, I mean, it was a daily thing for me. I mean, just having to rid myself of the old habits of needing to go to the gym, uh, be productive for the day, just go riding for the day, doing anything that was habitual for me in my disease. And so uh, from there, I, I really struggled with that. I couldn't balance my relationship with my eating disorder. That was uh, one thing that really took away from our relationship, uh, the major thing that took away our relationship. So um, I had to, to think about it long term. And also at the time, I was really not liking the body that I had developed from I mean, my massive eating and my my weightlifting, and I truly wasn't really satisfied with with what I saw. What is up, everybody? Eric the Electric coming to you guys again with another video. This is my first video in quite some time. I actually ended up having to move, and my camera broke, so I'm gonna be filming this with my iPhone. So you may be asking yourself, "Oh, Eric, what did you do?" I went on a massive cut. And I can remember being, I think I was 215, 217, uh, pushing that much weight around, I'm five foot eight, and I decided I was not happy or satisfied with my body fat. Granted, I was as strong as an ox, as my dad would say, and I was, I was deadlifting 450 pounds, I was bench pressing 235 pounds, I was overhead pressing 175 pounds, like I was just, I was destroying the weights, but I have, I felt like my skinny fat was, that skinny fat body composition that we all know and love and know about was plaguing me, and so I went from that to, I would say, a lower body fat percentage, this was me after the cut finished up, and that was kind of the, um, you know, the nail in the coffin really for my relationship, really, I feel like that. And a lot of other things too, uh, on her end, um, you know, we both had, had jobs and everything and the full-time job and that really led me to ending that relationship. And this is me on my first few weeks at the bicycle shop, which is pretty cool. Uh, I got my job at the bike shop back when that all transpired back in 2014. That's when this was taken. and. I had never really had a big boy job, and I say that quote unquote big boy job before, where I actually had to work from, you know, like a nine to seven job. I mean, that was, I, I was used to working four or five hour shifts, shifts at pickup sticks, you know, it wasn't, or at IHOP. I mean, I always worked in restaurants and I would go home and this is something that I actually had to, to commit to. And I can remember coming home at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night in leaving that early in the morning and having her be at the apartment all day and it was kind of like, you know, I felt like I barely ever spent any time with her. And I was fully committed to my job, fully committed to writing and it was just, it was one of those things that uh, made sense looking back at it now, you know. And up until that point, I'd never really taken YouTube or uh, what I did on YouTube that seriously for the most part. But when YouTube really became a, a passion and focus of mine that would be the uh you know that was the i can remember the day that i, I really committed to that was the day that we really saw our our fight started happening and then it divulged into this all right what's going on everybody um going back to you guys again with another video um it's gonna be a different one um I guess I really won't go into details right now, but had a very rough morning. I haven't cried in probably about 10 years. I don't cry a lot, so.
so then YouTube happened and that was around I would say the later part of 2014 and I was able to put more time a lot more focus into YouTube into school into my job and I started excelling at all of those I would say that I made all of those my main priorities and I was able to spend more time doing those things and it allowed me this new sense of freedom and allowed me to realize that I'm I'm an independent guy I mean whether I'm with somebody or not with somebody I am gonna do what I want to do and I'm going to have a goal and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to reach that goal so I went to the LA Fit Expo that year I met a lot of awesome people including Jerry Ward really cool guy uh, hung out at the YouTube house and hung out with Brian Turner and you know Chelsea and Meg and all those awesome people Igor and I I went to this expo and I met so many subscribers that truly supported me and were were just awesome genuine people and I mean I won't really beat around the bush and say that my ex was 100% supportive of what I did there were times where I you know I I would want to come home and edit footage and I, I couldn't because it would it would create this gigantic argument into how I was spending my time but I know now looking back at it that I did what I had to do because I was passionate about it it made me happy and it allowed me to meet awesome people like Travis S of course you guys all know him you should know him um, but it allowed me to to do what I wanted to do and that's what really mattered at the end of the day I mean what really matters guys is your own personal satisfaction and your happiness granted relationships should be a compromise but at the time there was there was no compromise it was either that or something else that was gonna be an argument over so um, overall I mean, looking back at it now, I wouldn't have done anything differently. I wouldn't have wanted to change who I was. And after that, that was the uh, beginning of 2015, I started uh, I started up with Cellucor and I started up with, with all of them and uh, that was when things really got serious. And now looking back on it, after everything, after all the challenges, after all the, the contests and and everything. I've always really gone back to to the fact that I, I talked to so many of you with my my ed chats and and hopefully with my insightful words. I try to be as insightful as possible. But this is uh, this is my past, and uh, I'm I'm not ashamed of it at all. I'm proud to spread the word, spread the message. And um, so many of you message me because there are so many of you out there with with eating disorders, and this it just it's horrible at the end of the day to see how many people are affected by it. But um, I had to realize one day that food will always exist. The, the bike, the gym, everything is gonna exist, but our health is something that we may not wake up tomorrow and have. I mean, we have to realize that um, every day we live on this earth, as cliche as it sounds, is a blessing. It really is. And so to interact with all of you who send me Snapchats like this and who've never even met me before, who just see this. They see a, a guy eating a bunch of food initially. And then, you know, the, the more videos they watch, the more they see they get a better understanding and are able to relate to them. That just, that's why I do this. That's why I love what I do and I will always do this. And uh, it's stressful at times, but I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it, so that's pretty much where I'm at and then here I am today in 2016 about to be uh, finishing up his last semester at college and I couldn't be happier so alrighty guys I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch the video if you did everybody this was the last video in my little series my recovery series this is the uh, final piece of the puzzle really 
and I've revealed so much to you guys, a lot about myself. Again, this is all mainly because I want to speak to all of you. I want any of you who are in a battle with an eating disorder, depression, anything, to be able to relate to these. That's the whole point of this, and also for me to reflect on them as well in the future if I need to. If you guys enjoyed it, definitely hit that thumbs up. It would mean so much to me. Feel free to follow me on my social media, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. You guys know the drill. Thanks again for watching the video, guys, and go right Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? Uh